Yeah, personally, happiness is such a thing. Watching a great movie is is genuine. Watching a great series is is happiness. Watching the first episode of Succession <laughs> was was pure <laughs> happiness. You know, spending time with my family, spending time with my my daughter, wife, dog, I mean, all of those things. Traveling, yeah. that's happiness. Born in the mid seventies, grew up watching Amitabh Bachchan. Was the biggest fan. There was only one God, and he was Mr. Bachchan. And so, grown up, of course, watching Sholay multiple times. And Amar Akbar Anthony was my favorite film. I mean, if I have to understand filmmaking, ke kya camera kahan lagate that kind of stuff. That came from assisting Bansali. That was film school. Working okay. with him and Hamdul Deshukar Sanam was film school. It was two and a half years, 16 hours a day. I didn't get money, but I was there from from when the script was even before the script was written, all through the writing of the script, through pre-production, music settings, shoot, post, editing, dubbing, mixing, sab kuch. So thank you so much for joining me on Humzo Cinema. It's such a pleasure, such an honor. I'm the biggest fan. Um, I mean, I still remember I was in class 10th or 11th when Odan came out for the first time. It that film significantly changed my life um, because I was still in school, struggling with issues of my own, and that film just kind of made me feel seen. And you know, and after that, Lutera and all the films that have come after that. So thank you so much. First of all, your films have been such an important kind of. Uh, it they, they have helped us in finding our own voices both creatively as well as personally so thank you so much for your cinema for for your voice um okay so first of all of course you know jubilee especially since it is a show about films it is a show about the movie world and anyway at humans of cinema the question that i always start with is the films that have had the deepest impact on your life but today i want to start with specifically if you have any specifically classic films uh maybe two from hollywood or two international classic films and two classic bollywood films or two classic indian films for that matter that have had the deepest influence on your life while growing up maybe even uh, got you started uh, in terms of your love for films so i mean, if if i have to go uh, films specifically so so there's two parts of it right one is just like which are the movies that you remember from your childhood which are yeah um the ones that just got you into the movies and then there's the the films that have influenced you as a filmmaker i think there's a one is a separate both those things it's not it's not the same it's not like yaar ye picture dekh ke jab main 6 saal ka tha to main usme director ban jaunga aisa to kabhi hota nahi hai you don't realize that until you're like 18 or something so when i was a kid i grew up uh, i was born in the mid 70s grew up watching amitabh bachchan was the biggest fan yeah. as i think every person my age at that time was i think yeah. there was only one god and he was mr bachchan and Correct. So, grown up, of course, watching Shole multiple times, and Amar Akbar Anthony was my favorite film. You know, mm. back in the day, which you know used to be the the, the family watch that that one would mm. kind of uh, do. And then, as you know, he, he uh, whatever would come after that, yeah, of Mr. Bachchan, you know, Mard or Kuli or any of these things. And I think with mm. the rest of the country, everybody was. When he got hit in Kuli and he was in hospital, the sabko pata tha. Even as a you know seven year old, you knew that he was in hospital, and it was a big deal. Yeah, so it was like, um, but that was the yeah, that was the, the the getting into the movies, getting into what the adoration of of a star. You know, there was a there was a big difference uh, in that. I think um, once there was a choice to become a filmmaker, or what you know, when you want to be, what, what drives you? I I. Had a big, uh, unlike a lot of my contemporaries and 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 people maybe slightly younger than me, that I was had a massive rejection of Indian cinema in the 90s. I just didn't, okay, because of what was happening in Hollywood cinema in the 90s. When did you start discovering Hollywood films? As a kid, only you were watching them. As a kid, I think by the late 80s, we were already watching them already. Yeah, I mean, Back to the Future, they liya tha, Die Hard, they liya tha. When uh, Terminator 2 came out, it was like the biggest thing ever. Like correct. that film is yes. still, I mean, it's a poster somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It's just still like. Back to the Future ka to hai yeh pe. Wo to hai. This is like favorite movie. Yeah. Die Hard ka bhi kahin hai. Yeah. 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 The big James Cameron movies, or the you know the 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 action set pieces. Like I loved those films, and then you had in the '90s, which was the the whether it's Reservoir Dogs or Pulp Fiction or Danny Boyle doing Train Spotting, mm. or Nolan coming in with Memento, or you know. So there suddenly you felt that and David Fincher, you know, doing yeah. Seven and stuff. You're like, wow, this is just a whole other kind of cinema that I know that me and Anurag and a lot of us are very very influenced by that. 
So those are the broad kind of things. Specifically, when it comes to movies, I think with Indian movies, um, very influenced by Piyasa. Um, I still remember the first time I saw Piyasa was at the original Mami. Uh, I think it was 97 or 98 or something. There was a Tata Theatre in in uh, the NCPA had a double uh, evening screenings. Were, there was a, it was a Doctor Strange Love followed by Piyasa. Okay. Okay. It was the most surreal double bill. <laughs> yeah. But. <laughs> Uh, so we went to see Doctor Strange Love and a lot of us are in the packed theatre for seeing Doctor Strange Love. Yeah. picture. But if anybody who's seen Doctor Strange knows that it's not a film you get in the first time you watch yeah. it. The humour is very like... Yeah. But if you've seen it before, it's fantastic. Yeah. So me and some other guy sitting next to me had seen it before. We were crazy in the picture. We were like laughing our asses off and all that. And then um, that film finished and then Piyasa started and Piyasa time I think 80% of the audience left. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. And it was just... Oh, wow. It was very surprising and very sad. And even then, when the 20% left, when the song starts, it was, you know, like very RT yeah. South Bombay type <laughs> reactions would come, and very disheartening. But also, when you're watching Piyasa on a screen, it's quite yeah. an experience. And I think that film yeah. and just the artistry that Guru Dutt, I think, brought to the table. I think for me, yeah. watching that was was a was a huge revelation in terms of you know the storytelling capabilities of what can one can do um, mm. you know of pushing the boundaries of having comical moments in a tragic film about a mm. poet and then there's also mystery and mistaken identity and kitna sara masala tha yaar us picture mein you know even though on the surface it feels when you talk about people like piyasa they feel like oh tragedy and it's not it's just like yeah. there's so much more to it than just yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, than that and i thought that was just phenomenal Then after that was a discovery of uh, Ray, which has been another massive kind of revelation for me in terms of the just the breadth of stories that he's been able to tell, whether it's Charulota, whether it's Jol Shagor, whether it's um, any of the Apu trilogy, or Mahanagar, or Nayak, or Kapurush, Mahapurush. I mean, he's the guy, he's a magician. Like every film yeah. of his is just completely, you know, magical and unique. And again, pushing the boundaries of storytelling, pushing the boundaries of short taking. Like, hmm. and you look at it back in the day, like, I, you know, you can't believe that these guys are sort of like doing that kind of stuff. Um, so there's that. And then, so within, I mean, from race films, again, I can't really choose one. But the other films, if I have to choose like the two. Indian films that have influenced me the most, I would say one is Piyasa and I'd say the second is Black Friday. Okay. You know, because again, just um, Anurag at that time making this really, really layered, incredible mm -hmm. film about the blasts and yeah. about the way it happened, where there's a, there's, a, there's a sense of, there's a detachment and yet there's a sense of empathy for everybody in that. Film, yeah. Not yeah. just, uh, you know. With much, much more nuance than what anyone else was doing at that time. 100%. Much more nuance and just, and stylish and fun yeah. and great writing and great characters and, you know, like just great setups. And again, you're just like, when someone pushes the boundary like that. And, I've, yeah. and Black Friday, I mean, I, I had worked with Anurag on Pan, so I was a friend. I, mm. you know, I was going on set and then... On Black Friday, he wanted me to uh, cut the trailers of it and I, I did the original trailer and all the things and also I've seen that film multiple times. So there's a bit of a study that's kind of happened on that. And I've always, every time I watch it, I'm always just amazed, you know, just completely in awe of what, you know, um, what Anurag was doing in that film and the, mm. the way the, you know, how a director, a writer, everything kind of comes together to sort of like, I guess from Hollywood, it's kind of tough to say. This is Back to the Future's mm. Always like if I have to say if I choose one film as my favorite film is probably Back to the Future. But there's also right up there is Seven Samurai and yeah. everything that Kurosawa does. I mm. think is just phenomenal. Of course, Four Hundred Blows. I, I know that it was a big influence for you. Four Hundred Blows is a big influence. Um, uh, Hitchcock's work is a massive influence. Notorious is a huge influence. Uh, anything that Hitchcock does actually, mm. when it comes, especially from writing, how to write characters in situations, has been a huge influence. And then in the 90s, like David Fincher has been my favorite go-to director. I think Fight Club is probably the film I've seen the most number of times. Just at any point in time, go back and watch them. Hmm. Um, Nolan's work has been massively influential about how to be able to take interesting cerebral subjects and turn them into these blockbusters, which, you know, in, in the hands of any other filmmaker is just going to end up becoming hmm. one of those head scratchers. But Nolan turns them into these... 
yeah. event movies that uh, yeah. you know that that really engage you. And I think that's uh, it's fascinating. Yeah. So, हाँ तो ऐसे long story short एक पिक्चर नहीं है बहुत सारी पिक्चर हैं बहुत सारे फिल्मेकर्स हैं. It's not just about yeah. a film. It's about a filmmaker and there because once you the thing is then I think as a film student tends to happen once you've seen a film that or a film that you really like, then you know, there's a tendency to like really get into their entire filmography and saying, yeah, what have I missed? You know, Correct. so you go deep dive. Then it's a full yeah. deep dive into watching, which currently, well, afterwards, even the modern day, whether it's uh, Michael Haneke, you know, to a certain point, yes. or Ruben Ostlund today, you know, yeah. where once you've yeah. seen Force Majeure in the Square, and then you wonder like, yeah, kya karta hai azmi, kaise yeah. karta hai? What is the, you know, what's the, what's the thing? So. Yeah. I think this is a question that every person in India who, or actually around the world, even that this is still a question, right? कि मतलब जो भी इंसान सोचता है कि मेरे को फिल्मेकर बनने का मन है, कभी राइटर बनने का मन है, सबसे पहले ही सोचते हैं कि यार हम फिल्म स्कूल जाएं कि नहीं जाएं, but but then you know we we look at you, we look at your journey, and we know that you are you know your learning happened in a very different way. So I mean one, where did your learning begin? Uh, and then second, uh, what what do you think that a person if Let's say if even I let's say want to uh, have aspirations to be a filmmaker. Um, what is what are some things that I need to keep in mind? So it's not so it's not um, there's no one magic answer honestly. I mm. think if I have to look back at my life, I think there's multiple things and some things I wasn't even aware of. Something I've just been recently been made aware of or have, or have become aware of. You know, from my own kind of like. So I guess the main part in a in a sense is. The uh, just the general love for the movies. I mean, the fact that you actually like the movies and like mm. going to the movies and like you know and you enjoy watching movies. I think that is a very very important part of being a filmmaker. Mm. Um, I got lucky in a sense, and I've said this in many places, is that where I got lucky because uh, my mom started working as a production manager. You know, after my parents uh, divorced, and then that was the first job. And mm. when well, I was what. 10 or 11 and we'd go to the set with her and it's be boring yeah matlab itna boring tha ke yaar ye log kya kar rahe hain light chalu kar rahe hain 50 bar wahi cheez kar rahe hain became very very painful to watch and that point of time there was no nahi film making nahi karna hai and mm. not until i was like 17 18 where she produced the show called teen talk which was yes on doordarshan and dd metro at that time um which was where because hum log we were in junior college was more like acha chal you guys are vela sitting in the canteen all day anyway kuch to kar nahi rahe samosa kha rahe ho chai pi rahe ho to aa jao kaam karo so me and bunch of my friends including vishal sinha who's now a dop he was a, you know a friend of mine in in uh, in college and um we all started working because we were vela and uh, that taught us once the thing is that you realize that once you're in it it's a very different kind of thing and then you find within that then you find your affinity for Oh, I love the editing room, or I love the shooting floor. I mm. don't like the research part very much. Production is not my thing, but art department costume is not my thing. But yes, you know, sitting and um, checking time code while I'm sort of shooting and marking and logging and you know those kind of things is very old-fashioned way. But that became an affinity, and suddenly you felt that yeah, days are just going by. It's like you know, it's just passing by like that. And then you, so I got lucky because I discovered that when I was 18. You know, some people don't discover that till they're twenty-four, twenty-five. There's, right. there's not. You discover a moment of magic happens when you're eighteen years old, and suddenly you're in. Mm. Um, I did go to. I went to XIC after that for a year. Um, okay. XIC has a. I don't know. Yes. They, they probably still have it. The the film appreciate the the film film production course. A film production course. Okay. Yeah. Which is a. I think it's it's a year long course. You go twice a week in the evenings, and then mm. Saturday, Sunday, full day, and. Mm. Um, I was there in that course. Arthi Bajaj, who is my editor, yes. was also part of that course. Anurag, I think, had done that same course the year before that, and there was, you know, other people who, you know, we all ended up becoming friends with that. So what XIC was a little bit of formal in the sense that it's a professional course in that sense. It's not film school per yeah, se. Yeah. Um, what it does teach you, what what XIC did teach me, is we used to have say classes in um, in. uh photography for example so the theory of photography you know okay. getting into that kind of stuff where you the interest level to understand what is shutter speed what is aperture hmm. uh what's the relationship between shutter speed and aperture what is you know a uh, shallow depth of field what is a non shallow depth of field right. um the fact that you understand the theory of those kind of things and yeah. then use it practically and you were still at that point of time in an analog world it wasn't a digital world ke camera out how shoot karo you still had to understand photography and shoot Correct. with film to so those things uh helped um the fact that you have to do everything in a group 
and when you understand group politics and when you understand how to work in a group and how to how to how do mm. how does how do the group dynamics right. affect you in a positive and negative way i think mm. that was a great learning that happened um at xic okay. where you understand ki collaboration kaise karni hai basically collaboration kaise karte ho with peers mm. how do you collaborate with peers to be able to sort of do something how do you separate uh, that kind of stuff and the third thing it teaches you it, it does teach you is the fact of just of of projection in the sense that what are you trying to say and you know in film school therefore you can try and say different things but don't be afraid of putting yourself out there to be able to say yaar aise kahani karte hain ya aise karte hain waise karte hain that kind of stuff just like otherwise especially depends on your personality i am not the most outgoing personality i am someone who's kind of quiet but that ends up teaching you a sense of being able to be a part of a group you find a comfort level so it does teach you that it didn't teach me filmmaking i mean if i have to understand filmmaking ke kya camera kahan lagate hain that kind of stuff that came from assisting bansali afterwards that right. came from there that. that was film school working okay. with him and hamdul jaisa na was film school it was two and a half years you uh, it was um, 16 hours a day for for that uh paise nahi mil rahe the but one was you would i was there from from when the script was even before the script was written all through the writing of the script through pre production music settings shoot पोस्ट एडिटिंग डबिंग मिक्सिंग सब कुछ ढाई साल के लिए तुम यू नो लाइक इट्स लाइक फुल ऑन लर्निंग एक्सपीरियंस एंड दैट टू इट वाज वन ऑफ द लास्ट फिल्म्स आई थिंक इन द कंट्री दैट वाज एडिटेड ऑन फिल्म सो द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग हाउ यू एडिट ऑन ट्रांजिशन दैट ट्रांजिशन बेसिकली इट वाज द लास्ट वन आई थिंक वाज वन ऑफ द लास्ट वन आई थिंक दैट्स बिकॉज़ संजय एंड बेला हैड अ affinity for film and you could at that point of time still work on film then you yeah. know one did it after that to gaya i mean even devdas immediately after that was shot on film but edited on avid and, okay. and so it, that and that learning is priceless quite honestly the old fashioned way of saying ke yaar shoot karenge shoot pe monitor nahi hai no one knows what's happening on a shoot only the cinematographer knows what he's seeing mm. and the director can look through the ip assistant directors are told ke this is the frame here to here you have to sort of like do it you're watching performances off camera you have no clue you shoot you then go see rushes hmm. rushes mein everybody scared because agar kuch mistake ho gaya to wahan padegi sabko <laughs> because yeah. you made a mistake that physical film then goes and gets edited that edited film how you sort of like take it you dub and you mix and you do all those things and finally when you see your your merit print with the dolby sound and color corrected thing and stuff and all your emotion you're so emotional that you all over you have tears watching that stuff on screen for the first time because it's a it's mm. it's real you know process yeah. Yeah, yeah so that was film school that for me was was mm. the way and that's practical and that that is mm. but again i've been lucky in the sense i i you had some access i had i i had the privilege of access to bansali because he and my mom had worked together when he was an assistant and she was a production manager dono ne sath mein kaam kiya tha so there was, an, there was access to be able to you know um there was access to uh, uh, to him i was young enough at that point of time to be able to say you know like there was a thing when i started working when i was 17 i made my first film when i was 32 now people see 32 is very young to make a first film i like 15 is an experience of working in the yeah, yeah you that started young counts for a lot yeah. that counts for a hell of a lot to have that experience of being able to work with yeah. sanjay with anurag to see different kinds of film making to go through a transition to being able to see the analog phase to the digital phase and you know there's a comfort level of that you find yourself as a storyteller the kind of stories that you want to tell you're not trying to ape somebody you're not trying to be somebody else you're trying to you know discover your own voice um through that there was that and then what i recently discovered as well is that when again when my when my i, I was given a camera when i was like a film camera to shoot or hot shot karke hota tha mm-hmm. when you used to shoot so school trips and friends and that kind of stuff and all that um and again the indulgence came from my father that point of time and maybe he was you know he was also feeling ke aap divorce ke baad ke thoda isko indulge karte hain bacche ko so i used to you know that is expensive yeah shooting on film wo yeah. can kharido wo process karo it's still like of you course, know even course. back in the what late 80s early 90s 100 rupees for the 100 rupees processing 200 rupees is a big deal yeah. to be able to shoot for 36 exposures yeah it's like yeah. a yeah. but he indulged me in that and i think that was another blessing because i started to see the, you start to see the world visually you know so when you're shooting just random pictures on a hot shot camera when you're um when you're 13 and 14 but mm. by the time i'm 18 years old i've bought a second hand nikon fm2 with a lens of understood photography and now photography i'm actually a photographer in the sense that there is a you've learned a skill mm. um and again picking up a skill takes a lot of time it takes time it takes effort it takes a lot of wastage um so therefore i can because i can see the world from a visual point point of view is why 
um, mm. which makes me a better director in the sense that because I'm not I'm not dependent on mm. somebody else's eye to be able to tell me where I should be able to place the camera. I'm not okay. dependent on on that. I understand visuals as as much as anybody else. But that again, I mean, that it's. It seems like a learned skill, but also if it's also it is a learned skill, but it's also because I've it's a developed skill. It's a developed skill. It's something that that again and it's, and, and again, it's the moment of uh, it's a of luck in a sense of of having learned that from the time I was you know 12 yeah. and 13. Yeah, well, but subconsciously or other, मतलब consciously नहीं हुआ. Correct, exactly. Yeah. अच्छा, so um, I mean this this other uh, question i guess uh, like everybody who loves film and everybody who watches a lot of films ki hum log kai bar is bare mein zarur sochte hain ki when it comes to for example the classic films right the older films most of them have compared to the films of today most of them have, have very traditional and very um, very yeah i mean traditional structures in terms of because they were the first films to be made like those are the films that now filmmakers are borrowing from right and those were the films those are filmmakers that were basically creating the language of cinema in, in the first place so when we watch a film like pyasa in today's time and watch a film like 400 blows in today's time um do you think that uh, a part of the appeal of those films also comes from the fact that they came at a particular time or do you think that even if the same exact film was made today it would have had the same impact No, I think everything has a time and a place, um, and I think there's a moment. There's a moment for them. The timelessness of something, I think, comes. Um, I think there is a moment in time where something has to has to has to come. And if you take Jani Bhi the Yaro as an example, the yeah. fact that the film um, has found its audience and its voice many many years later. Yeah. In fact, it it wasn't it wasn't when it actually did come out that that. Uh, mm. Or with Andaz um, Apna Apna, any of these kind of things. There is a growth. Or Agnipat also. I'm saying that there was, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a moment in time when it comes out, and it, it's not necessary that a film actually sort of like finds. Uh, for that matter, Lutera also. Lutera also. Yeah. That finds relevance, cultural relevance, you know, in a in a moment uh, yeah. over there. Um, it's I, it's tough to say right now. What I mean, with Citizen Kane being the the best example of something like that is the fact that yeah. today it's considered one of the greatest films in the history of uh, of cinema. Back then, you know. people are happy to burn it yeah. hmm. so um, i think it, it there's there's it is is very difficult to say one one has no idea like i have no idea what the reception to phone and blows was when it did come out in the mid 50s yeah. or what the reception to piasa was when it came out uh, at that yeah. time I, no one knows for sure um so I, i do think but i do think that when you when something is made which is which is which is already Or which is terrific and which is a good movie in that terms, I will eventually find its audience in places. I think there is always a, a moment in time, yeah, quite honestly. Like you have had a, a few movies like that, right? Like Babu Joshi was like that. It has found its audience now. So many people love it. I am a big fan. Um, Lutera, of course. Um, and so, how do you, as a filmmaker, navigate with that, especially in an industry that I mean, especially in a country where मतलब ट्विटर पे बहुत सारे लोग बस ये बात कर रहे होते हैं कि इस फिल्म की इस दिन की कलेक्शन कितनी है मतलब ये लोगों का ये रोज की कॉन्वर्जेशन है सो इन अ कंट्री लाइक दैट हाउ यू हाउ डू यू पर्सनली नेविगेट विद दैट एंड ऑफ कोर्स लाइक डू यू आई एम श्योर दैट यू गेट अफेक्टेड बाय इट व्हेन इट डज नॉट फाइंड इट्स ऑडियंस इमीडिएटली एंड हाउ डू यू काइंड ऑफ या लाइक नेविगेट विद इट नेविगेट थ्रू इट आई एम सॉरी या यू ऑनेस्टली ऑल यू कैन डू एंड एंड दिस इज द ट्रूथ ऑल यू ऑल यू कैन डू इन दैट मोमेंट इज is kind of i mean not self reflect also i just think it's a it's a question of saying okay what what is it exactly that didn't click in that moment what could you have done better uh yeah. what could what could have everybody obviously you know no one is going to no one no one goes to no one starts to make a film saying i want to make a film and i want i want um, i want critical appreciation but i don't care if the audience comes and sees it. that's not true yeah. no one does matlab har film ke sath chahte the ki it reaches as much 100%. as many people as possible and uh, that's exactly what you want You have to know who your audience is when you're making the film in the first place, and so, which is why right in the beginning, it's a Oran ka pata hai mloko na ki it's a small film and it'll find its small its core audience and eventually it'll grow from there, right? Okay. Uh, even Lutera has been made. Lutera, I mean, that's the thing. When everybody when it came out, everybody's like, "Arey yar, flop, flop, flop." And like, fact of the matter is that the film actually made money and we were nobody lost money on that film at all. It's just okay. the fact that because of the expectation of Ranveer Singh's next film and Sonakshi Sinha's next film, right. and sometimes expectation ke yar. Okay, okay. It's going to be a you know 30 crore weekend. It didn't happen, and that's but that's not the film it was anyway. वो script पढ़ते हैं सबको पता चलेगा this is not the film. Um, so there is a there there is a there's a utopian world. I think a lot of us filmmakers believe that the fact that 
okay, when a film will will launch, it will eventually find its word of mouth and find its audience and go and and go out there and um, and do something. Uh, the reality is the fact that we are not set up in an industry um, and a system um, theatrically that allows a film to breathe uh, at all. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Um, yeah. The U.S. has thirty thousand screens. We have ten thousand screens. Hmm. For what's four times the population of the U.S., we have you know a third of the screens that they have. Films can breathe in America. They can breathe on screen. You release a film, you know, an opening weekend doesn't perform. It has time to be able to find its audience, and which is why indie films still work in in the theatrical market. Which is why you'll find movies running for three, four, five months uh, in yeah. the U.S. where even your biggest blockbusters here are gone in six weeks because yeah. we just don't have enough theaters. It's not that. So the utopian. System ends up becoming the fact that okay, you believe that a film can breathe and find its audience theatrically. It doesn't. Eventually, it finds it online. And maybe that is the maybe that is the way. I think, and yeah. this is true for even for my films, whether it's uh, Udan or Lutera or Bhavesh, they've all found their audience post, whether it's on DVD or whether it's on streaming or whether it's via piracy or whatever. They found their audience afterwards, and so chal, you realize okay, okay, this is not. This is not a theatrical film. Maybe this should have been a series. Maybe this should have been something else. Or maybe this was the. um this was a mistake made on this so you deal with it so, but the other part is also is that it's not just pure filmmaking also i believe that marketing plays a huge part in in a lot of these in a in a lot of uh movies like and i and i believe that some of it was i believe some of Ma- bhavesh's failure was a marketing failure as well i think there was something there which just wasn't quite okay. didn't quite click in the sense of being able to tap into the real audience that might have come in had they you know um known the kind of thing the idea of being a song for example was a bad idea um i think lutera the expectations from from what sort of set itself out to end up becoming this like classical love story which it wasn't really you know i think and so it was a pitching off the film from a from a pure marketing perspective is for what the first trailer should have been and the first impression should have mm-hmm. been but that would have set the expectations right because it it tends to happen you expect something you go on but anyway all of that is a postmortem yeah end of the day it's just Yeah. yeah you just <laughs> you just you you move on and you make a story and hmm. you live in the moment and you do it for a year and year and a half and two years and then Correct. you're on after that. Sorry. So um about Julie I mean uh, I was just telling you before we started that I loved the show I've seen two episodes but they're both phenomenal I can't wait to see the rest of it. Um but I mean of course one of the things that uh, reached out to me so much is is the amount of of course the effort the time that you can see has been spent on the world building um you know you have like we have read these articles about mad men having spent some time on even getting the ice cubes of the period right and all of that right so did you have stuff like that that you were very particular about ki matlab these are the things that i want that i know for sure that these things need to be right with respect to the period no there's a lot of stuff uh there's a lot of stuff that that one is tried to even get at the problem is in so many places we don't even have one is that you don't physically have so for example i tried for a lot in in the very very first episode the very first shot there's a can the can is open and there's a reel of film inside and the reel of film in the center of it what holds it together what is spun around is called a bobbin okay right and that bobbin is plastic and it shouldn't be plastic ideally there were plastic bobbins back then but ideally there should be a metal bobbin you couldn't find one we couldn't find the metal bobbin anywhere and i think that um there are those kind of things that dd image only honestly only i know and a few other people sort of like recognize the entire fact that that is there but yes the idea is that you want to be able to go so our projectors are period correct our cameras are period correct everything is period correct okay. now for example the actual film film at that point of time they had used nitrate film nitrate film to hai nahi abhi so we're using um a laminated normal you know like what 35 mm laminated film that we were so again from a pure period perspective it's incorrect but hmm. um again it doesn't make a difference know. to you like as a filmmaker does it make it doesn't bother you while making it ki ar shit matlab ye wali cheez sahi honi chahiye thi then you would bother karta but when you also but that's also the practical there's a there's a practicality to as from as a filmmaker also you know it's not possible to get it hmm. here yes right. if i was doing this in the uk or the us or wherever and mm-hmm. i had you know tarantino's budget for sure mm-hmm. by all means uh so there's a certain practicality that you understand the fact right, that it's right. not available and there's certain things you win certain things you're okay to sort of like uh, let go like i understand why it's not possible 
but wherever it's it is possible and we've made full effort to make sure that everything is there the authenticity of the tickets of the era the authenticity right, right. of um, the posters obviously the art direction the glasses that they would use the glasses they would wear on the thing the pipes the watches uh, the clothes mm. the fabric the you know there is a massive authenticity that we've gone with with you know with with uh, with all that sort of stuff no so much of that that my uh, having been an assistant with bansali on hamdul education i've also understood how film works therefore editing works therefore what double joint kya hota hai uh. therefore when you see the stuff even though it's digital when it's on screen we're projecting digitally mm. the fact that i made my assistant jasmine actually take leader oh, wow. and actually write on the leader so if you if you do it at any point in time see it and pause it and slow it down it'll actually say what the real film is on the leader as you're kind of like watching it like utna tak to hum log hum log mad ho gaya tha i mean i was like boss it has to be as yeah, yeah. the beeps and you know the joints and the scratches on the film and you know all that kind of stuff is very authentic that okay, is really okay. and you know this is the second project that in where you are in a way also exploring stardom right um so one uh, what draws you to the subject of stardom first of all No, sir. I think I I just like the idea of just the 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 this make believe world that one ends up creating every day that we end up going to set. You're mm. you're making a world that you're making people buy into your vision or your make believe world of a story, and you're suspending the audience is suspending their belief to kind of walk in. I find that very fascinating. So I think uh, Jubilee, especially my my the very first film I wrote with Bhavani Iyer was a film called Bombay Talkies, which was about yeah. a director. Uh, so uh, there's an affinity, I think, and maybe it's the age. And I became assistant when I was like seventeen, eighteen, and you're walking onto this, you know, whatever at at age twenty, walking onto a big set and seeing all these lights and all that kind of stuff. And you're like, wow, this visually looks incredible. And how cool is it to sort of like be behind the scenes of this? And I think mm. um, it comes from that. place um i think the affinity for for that world comes from comes from from that emotion of when i was on a set for the first time and how things worked behind the scenes but i just love the idea of um of creating this you know this this make believe world and so the world to create the make believe world matlab kafi meta hai but yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is also yeah it was they came we there was a certain kind of like um metaness to sort of like uh, to that um and jubilee comes from there but i think we've also been very on on jubilee i think one is the yes the this what goes on behind the scenes of that world and but i think also um just the idea of having these really interesting characters yeah i think that's the number one part of jubilee the fact that you have these really really interesting characters very dramatic narrative um and people you want to invest in to be able to see what happens to them utma i think that's the mm. main part of it yeah. okay okay um and um Also, I mean, one of the one other conflict that I've explored in the show is this conflict bit that used to exist between theater and cinema back then. Um, it's not as prominent as uh, as it must have been back then. Another, it, it was also explored in Nayak, right? Nayak, there was a central conflict with the character as well. So again, like, uh, how did you figure that that was something that you wanted to keep in the show? Uh, that, that that was a conflict that you wanted to hinge it on. So again, the conflict hinges mainly on Jamshed Khan's dilemma, and it's not. Uh, I think one of the look, one of the one of the one of the key things that one needs to do, especially when doing something like Jubilee, and I think this is something that Atul and me were very very conscious of. The one thing we were conscious of right in the beginning was the fact, or, or maybe when he would do it, and I would be the one who's like the gatekeeper of saying that there are things we will understand as people who are insiders versus what people on the outside will understand. Mm. The moment you let your agenda. override your story um people will see through it and then they know that there's a certain uh, that you're being dishonest not dishonest but you're being obtuse about it um so i think the focus for us always was everything has to come in through whatever we're trying to say needs to come in through the perspective of characters and of people um so the whole cinema versus okay. uh, cinema versus theater mm -hmm. is jamshed's dilemma it. it's not a statement that one one is trying to make that statement You make a you 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 throw thought in there But about. But you felt like it must have been correct according to the times, basically. Hundred percent, it's yeah. correct according to the times because at that point of time you had it was the whole, um, the talkies, and when we say talkies, there's a very specific thing. Today movies are not considered the fact that when the talkies came in, they were movies that were replacing um, silent movies. Hmm. Up till the time that the silent movies became talkies, there was silent cinema, which was you would go into a theater and you'd watch a movie, and it was silent, and an orchestra would actually play uh, live music for you. Hmm. 
or it would play off the thing and you were watching silent reels of 10 20 minutes if you wanted to watch the talkies you'd go to the theater hmm. and you'd see a play hmm. which was 2 hours long right the talkies essentially changed the 2 hour hmm. theatrical format into the movies and so when right. they said talkies kha gayi theater ko is that's what that what is that's what happened is right. the fact that had cinema continued along its way for a little bit more time the, the theater would have also had more time to be able to right. um, survived in some way and survived in a far more robust sort of yeah. way yeah. um copala said this at some point like he believes the talkies came in too early he believes that there should have been a little bit more time for cinema to find its own feet as a uh, as a medium as a cinema as an you know a visual medium Uh, yeah. and i and i believe that i believe the talkies like cinema from whether some movies of buster keaton and charlie chaplin you know who have created an art form out of it in the you know in the 20s and and yeah. Uh, yeah. um and the talkies come along and then suddenly we are into saying okay let's take plays and let's take julius caesar and let's turn that into a movie so people can go and yeah. see it it's like no we should have let cinema express itself a little bit more time before you kind of like do that but anyway that's all that's just uh, well, do you think that there was much more visual ingenuity back then in the Yeah, 100%. I think visual ingenuity. If you look at, it's not just about Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin and you know Battleship or Temkin and, and those kind of movies. I think the visual. Yeah. I think there was an ambition back then to be able to tell interesting stories and and try and do something. I think the limitations of what faced uh, Chaplin and Buster Keaton back then is what made their movies amazing. It made yeah, their things right. amazing is because they had the limitation of not having sound. Is why we still get amazed when we come across those videos, right? 100%. Oh. I've shown it to my daughter recently and she was amazed. She's like yeah. the fact that you're actually understanding everything that's happening in a movie yeah. where no one's saying anything. It's all silent and you're still being able to do it. I think that's that's fascinating. It's magnificent to be able to like think of that and and that was cinema. That was cinema. That was cinema's own medium which I just, you know, which is a bit of a you just feel that yeah. if only um but chalo that's whatever it's almost 100 years in the past so um it's <laughs> okay i i i believe as a, and whether it's it's filmmakers in india or internationally i think that even through the which is why the golden era and jubilee is important because that was the time that a lot of the filmmakers were telling unique stories which were you know pioneering stories in a certain sort of sense and mm. and and uh daring and ambitious and whether it is raj kapoor making avara at the time you know about this this vagabond and you know falling in love with this but the the vision that he has in ghara ya mera pardesi of like sort of like doing Correct. that is is phenomenal or whether it's what gurudev is doing or whether it's what uh, vijayanand did afterwards you know when pushing the envelope and dil ka bhavar kare pukar inside their entire sort of like set or what mm. kurosawa was doing with seven samurai yes. or hitchcock was doing with any of his movies i think there is a certain pioneering approach that mm. that has uh, that was happening there which i think is less than now i think the ambition yeah. of movie makers to be able to tell phenomenal stories outside of their comfort zones is um, yeah is diminished yeah okay on an ending note i just have one last question uh, what is happiness for you how do you define happiness how do i define happy i mean on a <laughs> on a on a on a professional level happiness is i think and as i said this like it, it's when 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 the um, when the material is good and the writing is good and uh, you have a great crew and a great cast and and uh, all that sort of comes together in the best possible way and everyone is like i'm i will spend half a year 200 days of a year shooting and i think for me that's the ultimate happiness is to be able to find when everything comes together and i think that you know when your material and your people and and your look and your feel and your music and all that kind of stuff comes together it's all just one target at the end and there's a great synergy in the entire sort of like space to be able to like know exactly what you're making i think that is professional um happiness uh yeah personally happiness is such a, a thing watching a great movie is is genuine watching a great series is is happiness watching the first episode of succession <laughs> was was pure <laughs> happiness um uh you know spending time with my family spending time with my my daughter wife dog i think mean, all of those things traveling yeah. that's happiness i think there's a there's a thing um so yeah there's no yeah how do you how do you, matlab, do, wait, how do you have, one answer for that yeah wait, yeah there, there isn't right matlab isliye matlab which is why like everyone has their own definition of happiness and just um, kind of interesting to see what happiness means to every True. person you know uh mm-hmm. but sir on that note uh, thank you so much it's thank been you. it's been a pleasure it's been pleasure, an honor Ashit, thank you and uh, yeah um this was mr vikram aitu mutwani and uh, what jubilee event comes out yes <laughs> april 7 <laughs> on prime video <laughs> on prime video <laughs>
<laughs> <laughs> yes, that's important. <laughs>